Let's talk sound preferences. What do I like? What gets my juices flowing? Well, for me, I like an overall quite balanced presentation with a slight bass boost. I like my bass quality over my quantity. So that means instead of having that huge giant sub bass shelf, uh, with the scooped out lower bass, I like more mid bass. I like the slam, the attack, um, and the texture that comes with that to add a little bit more musicality, to add a little bit more weight. And I think that's really important to have into the mix, that coloration. So your instrumental, like piano, like guitar and cello, all sound correct, as well as some male vocals to add that huskiness. and. Here's the tricky part. If you add too much into that lower bass and the lower mids, uh, you get too much bass bleed. Things become too warm. Um, and there needs to be a happy medium there. So uh, I do like my female vocals. Don't muck with those at all. Um, and then when you transition into the upper mids, when the pin again or the ear gain, they call that, if it's too steep or too much, say beyond 10 dB of ear gain, things become too forward, too mid-centric, too shouty. And then you can't listen to things louder. And I like listening to my music louder and longer. Uh, around that 5K area, I'm also a bit treble sensitive. Uh, so for me, if there's too much information there, I get ear ringing, I get fatigue, um, and it just doesn't make it as enjoyable for me. But I still like my information up there to add enough weight and body. Uh, I'm a big critique for tonality and correct timbre when it comes to instrumental. So I'm listening for that. That's what uh, really uh, gets me excited and enjoy the music when I can have gear playback like that. Welcome to my first video with my new studio setup. Um, been been working uh, quite hard on. Uh, I got a new Mac Studio, and all of my vids are now uh, shot with Final uh, Cut Pro. So, took a little bit of a learning curve to uh, learn all of that again. Um, but I'm gonna up my game on my videos, and I thought this was the perfect one to do it. This is the video for the Fool. Performer 7. 
I know it says 5.2. I know the marketing says 5.2 everywhere. It's actually not a 5.2. It's actually a two dynamic drivers uh, and four balanced armatures and one micro planar. So technically it should be a two plus four plus one if we're doing that math. Uh, pricing, don't know yet. It's coming out. Uh, this is on the 21st uh, shooting this video and it'll be out on end of October 2024. Um, let's talk about some of the let's talk about the p7 and uh, and some of the tech and now a fool is uh, infamous for pushing forwards on tech uh, when it comes to im and love it i love seeing it uh, i haven't always loved all of their tunings uh, i thought the p8 uh, was quite boring i've never listened to the p5 and I absolutely love the Cantor to smithereens. So I was pretty stoked for this bad boy. Um, back is in the technology, the RLC frequency division, the crossover network. Uh, there is a high dampening air pressure balance system. Very cool how they do that. No driver flex, no pop, no in-ear pressure, wear it for hours, blast away fantastic uh, 3d acoustic printed tube structure again they do this so very well um, and the goals here uh, it's not just marketing and names they, they do this for getting an extra wide frequency response uh, by using acoustic circuitries and um, crossover network to achieve their tuning so it's well done the modeling that they use, uh, they can get a very, and it, and it shows, I'll pull up a graph here, a very extended, smooth replay. Absolutely. Uh, that was one of their goals. The second goal for a fool in this one uh, was easy to drive. And I did use it off of my um, Hibby uh, WU1 uh, Bluetooth dongle. Uh, around the house you know doing my domestic stuff uh and the third was getting exceptional bass and treble response and uh two check marks on that one as well you'll notice the green theme that's because everything is going green here so um i love the fact that the p7 for me talk about that bass and treble response um i think they show up other ims on how to do bass properly uh, with two drivers concentrically uh, mounted uh, and they use an acoustic tube structure and a y to funnel out the bass instead of this fake isobarics that have deconstructive interference and I have yet to hear uh, an implementation of that that wowed me. It didn't. Whereas this concentric uh, design, the Shanling ME600 did it uh, in a molded housing that fired down. The uh, Penon 10th anniversary did it. Again, two of my other favorite IMs. And I see a pattern going on here. Uh, number three is the P7 for me. I think yeah, a fool in the base department did a really phenomenal job on balancing out the low sub frequency energy and the balance of mid bass slam and attack. And again, at the beginning of my video, I tell you what my preferences are, and that's one of them: the the slam, the fast attack, and the hit. P7 has that for me, uh, and it goes low, um, no problem there. The one thing I will say straight up that caught me on this I am too, and, and some don't wow me as much, but this has some pretty insane 3D imaging. Um, I was listening to Sengwin from the Niels Klein singers, and some of the effects uh, were sounding like they were coming from the not just the top of my head but from behind me but like literally up here and that was probably the first time i've ever heard that uh there was another i am where i was playing share where it kind of blasted my brain but this was different in the way it did the the staging so does something special there 
so yeah, I'm jumping right into sound here. Uh, and let's go to another one, a cellist. One of my favorite, uh, Tina Gao, Circle of Life, uh, Strings. Oh my, so realistic, so clean, so natural and smooth. Uh, that micro planar was an excellent, excellent choice to do, uh, to use over a balanced armature because I think it does uh, treble more naturally than a balanced armature does with none of that uh, BA metallic sheen timber uh, that you get. The top end on this set sounds so effortlessly reproduced uh, the way it does the highs. It was a real, real treat from this track and every other track that had strings. So uh, switch, uh, switching gears here, painted black by the Tea Party. Uh, sometimes uh, you get an IM that uh, sounds spacious. Uh, I'm talking about stage. Um, sometimes intimate, right, where it's just all in your, your headspace. But the P7 replays tracks with a stage that is simply wonderful. Uh, and that vocal and instrumental placement uh, is done in such a way to enhance your experience. Um, and that's really great. It's to enhance your experience and pull you into the music. Um, and it's very engrossing and perfectly balanced. Um, and that's the other part about this set that I'm going to say just absolutely stand out. Very, very balanced from the bass to the top end treble. Uh, I was going to say peaks, but it doesn't have treble notes. Very balanced across the board. Uh, for a rock track, I give it a big thumbs up. Absolutely, yes. Life goes on. Let's throw some jazz in here uh, and bass texture, right? The P7, um, and this was the Ezra Collective. Hits hard with the right tips, uh, keeps everything in check, balanced, and fun. And that's the thing. I, I plan around two with different sources and different tips. Uh, my end result was, uh, I'll go over that with sources, but some Osla regular uh, tips. They really did well uh, for me. Um, it is a bit tip dependent, uh, so and fitment again, it's a, a fool, so make sure you can get it deep, otherwise, it'll be too bright for you. Uh, so, if you're hearing you know comments that it's it's really overly bright or shill, then it's probably a fitment thing, or they don't have it inserted deep enough. You do need to get this thing deep. So, for me, I used uh, perfect fitting tips, shoved it deep, and well, oh, it's a treat, right. <clears throat> Uh, Yam Morte by, Pocho, by, by Pancho Sanchez. I was going too far with that accent. Uh, listening for instrumental correctness, uh, getting a clean, well-defined notes, natural sounding and lovely replay on this track. So really did love it for uh, some jazz as well. So a couple genres uh, hitting the mark. Uh, a spoiler alert, um, it's an all-rounder. Uh, I, I don't think there was a genre um, that it didn't do well. I was listening to some. Uh, now, of course, you'd probably want uh, something maybe even bassier for um, for some hip hop, but I was I was pretty happy with that. Um, speaking of a bassier track, uh, "Parachute" by Shimza and Rachel Chinoriri. Punchy full bass, perfect mix of full bass and extended lower bass. That's what I was talking about earlier. The bass hits that perfect balance. Um, and again, uh, it has energy there. The mids carry in perfectly. Uh, they have lots of energy. The treble has lots of energy. Nothing is pushing anything out of the way. They're all in very good cohesion. Um, and that could be said for the entire 20 to 20. Again, very balanced I am. Um, Karma by Mod Sun. More rock. P7. <laughs> it's an excellent rock I am. Uh, and some I am's that are too energetic up top are, for me, not great for rock because you can't dial it up. And P7, I can dial it up. Uh that plays back this rock track, uh, exciting, fun, lots of uh, tremble energy to bring the hammer down, uh, great vocals, bass that is tactile and fun. So it just screams, turn me up, uh, and I love it uh, for that. 
Lila, acoustic, live version from Eric Clapton. The P7 is a very resolving. Uh, the nuances you can pick up are quite impressive, uh, as was the timbre of the guitar. It was really natural and realistic sounding. Uh, I like uh, how the P7 replayed this track with the mic settings and the fact uh, that you could hear the reverb effects differently with the... Uh, Eric's uh, mic and then the backup singer so uh, the reverb was really really cool uh, and the P7 to pick that up in the mix uh, was quite excellent uh, now enter Sandman by Yon San Na if you don't know this lady get to know her she is a phenomenal vocalist her music is really neat and fun uh, female vocals. This is what I'm listening for, and guitar. So, firstly, the guitar comes through with some great weight, and I look for that. Uh, is there enough weight down in the mid bass to bring uh, a guitar uh, to livelihood? Like, does it sound correct? And yeah, absolutely. But does it have too much that it screws up female vocals? And that's a really good track to to get. And and this is a really psychedelic uh, track as well. Uh, for this one, uh, again, this was tips. So when I was playing around with tips, the first time I, uh, was doing these impressions, uh, I thought her vocal sounded a bit recessed and again, uh, switching tips, uh, and went over to the Osla that cleaned up a lot. Tips are so important guys. Um, when I was listening to the, in comparison, because when I listen to, I want to listen to the tonality of uh, somebody's voice or the timbre of an instrument, my comparison is my Soft Ears Twilight, my single DD. I think it has one of the best uh, replays for that. So when I do comparisons to how does this thing sound, uh, it's it's very important to I think to compare against something else that you know how it sounds and it did very good it was 85 percent of perfection and that's saying a lot uh, about this I think her vocals uh, still sound a little bit mm, not as good as the Twilight but again that's a 930 dollar very cohesive single dynamic so comparing a set that's uh, one third of its price is uh, still viable i think now i'm going to do some comparisons to some other ims and that's why this one has uh, is a little bit longer video but i think it's really good to give you some context here so uh, at 359 dollars uh, you can go back into uh, my uh, T uh, Zen's T Pro video where I really went into a little bit more depth about uh, the P7 versus the T's Pros, but in a synopsis, um, the T Pros again use that face-to-face -face, sub bass focused. Um, again, it wasn't. It was a it was it was good, but it wasn't my favorite. Uh, and what I said in comparison, doing A B. Um, it, the P7 is bass-wise faster, tighter. Um, the T Pros do go down lower, but again, it's that's that's tuning, right? The P7 killed it for resolution and details. Uh, has better treble energy, better tonality up top for instrumental and strings. It's more resolving. Uh, you can pick up more nuances in the music. Uh, the stage is way, way bigger, more 3D uh, on the P7, and it was better balanced. So at a $359 IM, I think the P7 is going to come in uh, at that or less. Um, and so giving you some uh, comparisons. Let's uh, throw it this one up against another one of my faves, right? So this one was an interesting one. This one also uses, this is the Shanling ME600. This also uses two six millimeter uh, biodynamic uh, drivers. Um, and they're done in that plastic 3D housing and they're firing down with the BAs. Really well done. Um, it's a 3BA. 2DD, $329, so it'll probably come in a little bit more than the P7. How did it do? 
Okay. Uh, well, one thing the Shandling has over the P7 is it does have tuning nozzles uh, and a modular cable and a nice case. Um, so it had it for the accessories. The mid-range tonality uh, sounds very similar. Uh, the P7 loses the tad bit of warmth uh, the ME600 does and leans towards more of the neutral analytical side with better technicalities and details. Uh, the resolution is also better on the P7. Uh, the ME600 sounds more musical in a colored way. Uh, bass uh, hits harder with the Shanling, um, again, uh, with an extra layer to the notes that the P7 gets close uh, to, but the Shanling is a better performer in the low-end department. Uh, stage is killer on the ME600 as well, but the P7 is just even more 3D, so the staging goes to the P7. Uh, it would really come down to, in these two IMs to personal preferences. Um, I love both dearly. The warmer, bassier, more tunable, better cable case goes ME600. The more neutral, balanced, uh, more air and extension um, and stage goes to the P7. Now throwing up a, against another one, uh, Juzzier Butterfly 61T. I really do love this IM. 220 bucks. Graphs very similar as well. Tonality wise, uh, so damn close. These are tuned very, very closely. But here's where you do the critical listening. The P7 does edge it out uh, on overall resolution and when you, what you can pick up uh, in the music for details. The mids are less forward uh, on the P7 as well. Base, base texture, easy win for the P7. Deeper, more body and weight and speed and overall depth to the notes uh, went to the a fool. Stage, micro details also go to the P7. Overall natural tonality for vocals and instrumental also go to the a fool. Smoother yet more detailed 61T. That's exactly how I would describe it. Um, it is the upgrade of the butterfly. The butterfly is, though, a very fantastic IM, but is simply, in this case, outclassed by the P7 in all metrics. One more for you, a $450 IM in this case. What happens if I do step up uh, versus the Meyer Audio Salivo SLT6, the 6BA, uh, all Sonyan and Knowles BAs? Uh, two tuning switches and a modular cable. So there we go. So you got some more tunability over the P7. Uh, the SLT6 in this case is definitely a step up um, with those Sonyan BAs are fantastic. And the bass is very good as well. The fluidness of the way the overall frequencies are replayed uh, are more, mm, yes, a step up over the P7, more natural playback of vocal and instrumentals. Mids are more natural on the SLT6. Uh, bass, though, has that dynamic driver authority on the A Fool. It has that texture, it has the decay over the fabulous Sonyan BAs, but DDs will beat out a BA any day for me for bass. Base department, P7. And while the P7 uh, might have more trouble, uh, it is not as refined and natural as the SLT6. Uh, it does a very good job up top. Strings, flute, uh, the ability to uh, cleanly layer a busy track with lots going on shows where the P7 actually falls down against a more expensive IAM. Here the microplaner I think is a bit outclassed, but it may not have been if it was tuned with uh, the same kind of energy as the SLT6. So that's how those two compared against each other. To conclude, uh, some pros. Really a really nice all-rounder. Uh, a choice of 3.5 or 4.4 in the stock termination. A really well-balanced IM, 20 to 20,000. 
uh, stand out micro and macro details. If you're not familiar with what that is, uh, that is the ability of an IM that I uh, use as a metric to, in, in classical music, where you have a quiet passage and then a transition to a louder passage. Uh, the P8, for instance, when you were listening to that, it just wouldn't have that excitement, that energy level. And that's kind of what I didn't like about it. It was boring. And where the P7 now actually takes that up uh, to a new game. Um, it's the fun, fun, fun version of the P8. Um, so the macro and micro details, listening to a quiet passes passage and then all of a sudden ramping up and then going back down that how it translates emotion um, the p7 does it fantastic and that's what's really different over the p8 uh, that i thought anyway the 3d imaging uh, is done very very well on the performer 7 it's a very cohesive tribrid absolutely you can't tell where the dynamic driver is, uh, dynamic drivers are ending, the BAs are picking up, and the micro planar is taking over the very top end. Really well done. Uh, some things to talk about um, that I didn't like. Whilst the stock cable is soft and flexible, uh, it's not a great sounding cable in the least and it muddies up the sound so not a huge fan um, i got in when i get a special i am i pair it with a special cable i listen to it first i find a cable that is uh, gonna be uh, working really well with it and in this case uh i'll put a link in the description of this nice uh or sorry this um uh what did i get x i n h s a cable and it's it's beautiful green and it matches up perfectly with the face plates uh, in 4.4 for me. It's a solid uh, 7N OFCC cable. So it this I am for me um, and to talk about um, overall t t how I tuned mine in the end. Um, I also like the cable and the fact that it had flat uh, terminations as well. I like that versus the big fat recessed ones that stick out too far. Um, so here's mine with the Osla tips, wide bore. Again, uh, I push them, you know, quite far down. I get great fit, man. These are nice shells, uh, and they're super comfy. So for me, uh, wear for hours and hours. Um, I highly recommend this cable. The uh, again, solid copper versus SPC. Um, it added some. It's a, that's not a great cable. Get rid of the stock cable. Buy yourself a better cable. Do yourself a favor. This IM deserves it. Um, I think I paid about forty dollars US for this cable on sale. Highly worth it. Again, I'll put the link in the description. Um, <clears throat> what else would I have liked to see? I would have liked to see. Well, first of all, uh, it's not the same presentation unboxing experience as the Cantor. It's half the price, but really kind of cheaped out on the uh, uh, plastic puck case. Not my favorite. Uh, again, not my favorite for cable. Packaging is fine. Uh, ear tips selection, fine. No problem. Great, actually. I wish, uh, a fool, you would... Um, put your names on the side. You have beautiful face plates, but it kind of mucks it up a bit. And that's one of the things I keep hearing people talk about. So some feedback for you when you watch this video is maybe think about putting your, uh, your name and your model number on the sides. Um, and secondly, with shells, a uh, beautiful shell, done nicely but it's a little plain i'll be honest uh, just a standard black uh, shell and a top plate I could have fancied it up a little bit more um, and maybe maybe a dark translucent uh, shell instead of black so we can see the insides that would have been cool so not a whole lot of complaints going on but some little things and and to help you improve right i think this is going to come on 300 bucks um 
doesn't sound like it. Nowhere close. Not many faults. A uh, great bass that's uh, not afraid to rumble. Uh, and enough punch for rock and some great speed and texture. I, I keep making the uh, approved face um, with 10 minutes of Hawkman Yim's uh, poem of Chinese rum, right? 10 minutes of bass and bass texture and decay, and it did it really, really well. Uh, the mids and the lower mids have enough weight and body to give piano, I talk about this all the time, guitar, drums, cello, a natural sound. Overall mids come through with a clean and uncolored uh, texture. If anything, I would have had preferred a touch more upper mids, uh, but only on some tracks, uh, as I did find the P7 quite balanced across the board uh, from sub bass again all the way up to the ultra highs. Speaking of the highs, that microplane R again, the implementation and how it's tuned is so very well done. Again, I'll say it, it was an excellent choice over a BA. Uh, gets you all the sparkles and the zings. Uh, and the P7 also renders strings so cleanly without that BA timber. So again, that was one of the things I, I thought was a standout about this set. So yeah, I really enjoy this set. I think it's going to be a market disruptor. Um, because it sounds so good and it's so well-rounded and it's so well-tuned, it, it's hard to fault, uh, honestly. Uh, this is Tone Deaf Monk. Thank you for watching, and I love you all. Mm -hmm.